Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So in here I want us to learn about string methods. So the type string, as you can see here, is not a primitive like the way int is. And this is why we start with a capitalized letter when describing a string, as opposed to when we are doing int, we'll do something like this, which is a small letter there, because this is really not a class. However, this one is a class, just like we have this class here we've created. There's also a class that's created by the people who made Java and it's called string. So with every class, as you can see, there are methods like this one. So the string class will have methods in there, which is some functions which were put there for you to use to manipulate strings. So this is very, very useful because there are certain things you may want to do. You don't have to uh, create functions to do those things from scratch. Somebody already did the work. So here are a few of those uh, methods we're going to use. So remember that every method is actually a function. So certain times you will see properties of a class being used and certain times you will see methods. So the difference is that when you use a method, you put brackets. So for example, when we see length there, we will put length like this, and then we'll put brackets like that. Then you know it's actually a method. Just like this one here, the next line on the scanner. This one is a function within this kind of class. And as you can see, this is why this kind of class is capitalized like this, because it is a class and you run it. Uh, when you instantiate it, you tell it where you want to get the source so that it knows in advance. And then these are methods that run just like this one. This one is a method because it's got brackets here, but this one is a property because it has no brackets over here. It would be a method if it was like this, but like this, it means it's just a variable that contains a function within it. And when we import something like this, for example, scanner, this is capitalized. So we know this is the class name, but the rest of this is a package name, which we are going to learn about uh, very soon in another video. So this is just the package name to differentiate between classes because we use package names to avoid class name collisions because there could be a scanner of a different type doing a completely different job for as long as it's in a different package, uh, it can live on the same project. Because the way it is right now, if I tried to make another class called test, it's going to uh, give me problems because now we have two exact same classes and it won't know which class you're calling uh, when you instantiate it. But so for now, let's look at each method for your string uh, one at a time, right? So let's start with the length one here. So the length method tells us how long a string is. So for some reason, you may want to know how long a string is. This one will tell you. So what I've done here is we have our scanner imported and we instantiate the scanner over here and then we tell the user, please type something. And then we grab the string here that the user has typed. And then all we want to do is tell us how long the string is. Now, I don't want to keep typing this uh, string system dot out to print. I want a shorter version. I want to be able to just do this PR short for print and then do string dot length like that. So this part string, which is this string we've created when I, whenever you have a string variable and then you do dot length at the end like this, this will return an integer telling you how long the string is. Now, when, once we get that number, I want to print it. So I want to create a function called PR or a method called PR within here so that something that can shorten the print process instead of me typing this whole thing, right? So, but I want to put some text as well. So it's going to say uh, string length 
uh, is and then full, st uh, full colon and then let's add that number because this one would just be a number there so let's create this function here so we can make a function down here to facilitate that so that function now since we are in a static uh, our main this is the function or the method that's running right now and it's running in static mode we can only call other um, static functions from here we can call ones that don't uh, need instantiation but for now because we can't reinstantiate this class itself so it has to be static anyway so i'm gonna say static it doesn't return anything so it's gonna be void and i'm gonna call it pr like that so all i want to do in here uh i thought i had copied that let me copy this and let me paste over there oh there we go so instead of me printing a specific message i will receive whatever message is sent in there and print it here so i have to specify that it's a string and i'm gonna call it text so over here i'll just type text like so all right so that's what this function does just prints whatever you give it and it's called pr so that it's shorter okay so this will be just fine so like this we're using the length to find out how long this is so let's test this out real quick so i'm gonna go with java we won't compile this time since we learned that uh, we can do this without compiling we can just compile our final project so here i'm gonna say java say test dot java and run it so it does a self compilation so please type something okay so i'm gonna type hello and string length is five and as you can see if i count that's one two three four five that's correct so if we try this again uh like so and we i type something now uh if i put spaces like this and say hello and put more spaces it won't be five anymore it's 21 now that's because it counts even the empties as well so all spaces are counted with it as well so that's how you get the string length which brings us to the next one which is trim so trim is used to remove spaces on both sides of a string the beginning and the end remove all spaces there so in this case i have a string that i got from here now once i grab it before i use it i can trim it to make sure it's all good so i can say string is equal to string dot trim like that so just by doing that i remove the trailing and leading spaces now it doesn't remove the spaces in the middle of the text but just at the beginning and the end so here let's try this thing again where we put spaces before we type the word hello and you will notice that it will still say string length is five because it does remove the spaces at the beginning and at the end here before doing that so that's what trim can do uh, char at this one will just give you a character at a specific position right so here uh, if we say char at is char is short for character now here i want to do something like this so i want to know the position so please type um please type something right let's grab that and then we've grabbed it into the string and then please type a numeric position something like this okay so then this one we're gonna call it num like this okay so we grab a string we grab a number position 
So we have a string. We trim the string, right? Let me move this here. And then we do the same thing here, but we trim the number like so. OK, so this one is num now. Oops. My mouse num. OK, so that's a we assume that's a number. Now we make sure we convert it to a number. So here I'm going to say int. Um, I'm going to call it uh, position pause like that. Uh, is equal to now I just want to convert num to a number like that because it's a string currently and I can do that using an integer function so integer now just like string integer is another class as well that was created to handle numbers so or integers in, to be specific so it has a method called um, parse int like that OK, so what that method does is it converts whatever string you put in here or whatever you put in here into an integer. It could be a Boolean. It could be a, uh, a double a float. It will convert that to an integer. So the position now is whatever number we put in there. Right. OK, so if, for example, um, so let's see, character at position because that's the number is and then we're going to do char at like this okay I should put that there because it's a method char at and then put the position number in there so in there we're just putting we're just asking in this string what letter is at position number eight for example or position number nine or position number four and stuff but we are just using variables in this case because I want to be able to type a new sentence and then type a new position for me to deal with here. So let's go back here and see how that would work. Let's clear the screen and let's try to run our project. So I'm going to say Java test dot Java like this. OK, so please type something and say um, hello there. Please type a numeric position, right? So I want to see what I would get if I type uh, number two, for example. So I'm going to put two and enter. So character at two is this one. Now remember it starts at zero. So let's try this again. So that you see what, what would happen. Here we're going to say uh, type something. Hello there, right? And please type a numeric position. If I put zero, it will show H because that's the beginning of this. Now, what if I type something that does not exist, a position that does not exist? So type something. And in this case, we're going to say, um, hello there again. And let me put a position of 30 because I know that one does not exist. Now I get an exception. I get an error. It says, array out of bounds says uh, index 30 out of bounds for length 11. So what it's saying here is that your index which you've given is 30 but the maximum length is 11. So that does not tally. So how can we avoid such errors? So let's do a little cleanup to avoid these errors. Now before we fix that there's another error that we haven't thought about and this one is if I do this let me run it again. So please type something. I'll type hello there again. And when somebody, when we are told to type a numeric position, what if I type uh, some text instead of numbers? Maybe there's some numbers in there, but some text as well and press enter. I will also get an error because of course uh, we cannot convert this string into a number. So those are the two places of weakness. And how can we fix those? So first of all, let's deal with the, um, uh, the first error here. And that error is error out of bounds. So we can use the length property to find out if position is really part of string. So here we're going to say something like before we even. Uh, yeah, this is the part where we are doing char at 
right? So what I'm going to do is say if, so we put an if statement now to figure things out. If string dot length, you see, uh, let's do dot length here. I have trouble typing length. If string dot length like that is, now that's a number that will result in a number, is greater or equal to uh, position, right? Then we have a problem. This is out of bounds. It's gone over the mark because if it's greater than the length of the string, then we can find that. Uh, greater than the, because if position is greater, oh wait, uh, no, this is fine. Actually, we should check if the position that we've given to find, if it's greater or equal to the length of this one, then this is a miss. Okay. So in this case, we're going to do something and then else we'll do this. So here we will print a message on both cases. However, the message here will be different. The message here will say um, your number is longer than the string length. Okay. Or you can say, please type a shorter number or something like that. So at least we've solved one problem here. Now, what about the issue where we try to convert a... Um, uh, a number, something that isn't a number into an integer. So if we look here on the, on the methods, there is one here called, uh, where is that? It's called contains. So there's one missing here actually. So there's one called match. So this one, um, what does it return? I think it returns a match. So we will add it there. It's called, <coughs> sorry, it's called match like that. Okay. So we will use that method as well. So we want to check uh, using a regular expression if the, before trying to convert this, if it actually is a numeric value. So when you're using regular expressions, I have a series on regular expressions on this channel. You can check that out, though I, I don't know if I completed it. I may need to complete that tutorial, that series, I mean. So here you can put something like this. You say 0 to 9, something like that, and then put a plus to say any number of characters, one or many. If it matches that, then it's a number. So here what I'm going to do is say... Uh, if. Now, I want to continuously ask the user to type a number until they get it right, because I do need a number. So I'm going to use a while loop here. So we're going to say while num dot match. Is it match or matches? I think it's matches like this one. Uh, if it's not that, we're going to get an error. Okay, so there we go. So why or not, let's put a not there. Why on number does not match. So this one is when it matches, but then we invert the result from a true to a false. So while this is true here, so this will always be true for as long as num does not contain a valid number. At this point, it's a string. So this is this string uh, method will work. But pause is a an integer, so these string methods would not work on it. But while it's like this, we ask again, please type, so that we get a different value this time. So remember that with while loop, uh, whatever you put in the condition here must be changing within the loop itself. If it's not there, you're not changing anything within the loop, then you are creating an infinite loop. So here you see num. Uh, there's a possibility of us to change num here. Now, I don't need to instantiate it again because it's already instantiated. So I'm just going to say num is equal to, please type a, num a numeric position, right? So it will keep asking me, 
please type in numeric position until I get it right. Okay, so let's see how that will work. So let me clear everything. Let's try again, let's say Java, uh, test.java. So we'll say hello there. So first of all, let's just type a position that does not exist so that we see, and it says your number is longer than the string length. Okay, so we don't get an error anymore, which is great. Let's start again. Uh, let's do hello there. So let's see the second error now, which is if I type some letters instead, it asks me, please type a numeric position. So for as long as I keep typing something that isn't a number, it will repeat itself until I type a number like, let's say, let's try, I want to get an O. So it's zero, one, two, three, four. Let me type four. And there we go. Character at four is O. So you can see how to fix such issues and deal with errors at the same time. Okay, so that is great. Now let's move on. So this one is actually matches, not match. So we've seen how this one works and how these guys work as well. So let's keep ahead to a few that... Um, actually, let's see. Uh, contains... So I'm sure you can you can roughly guess what contains means. It will check if a string contains another string. But before that, let's see how we can get a substring here. So also, if you uh, you see here, there's one method that's there are two methods here that are named exactly the same thing. You can do this in Java. It's called method overloading. We will see how that is done where two exact same methods can work for as long as they have a different signature over here, meaning this one checks in, expects one value, this one expects two values, just that is enough to for Java to consider them different. So in this case, you can create a substring. So a substring is a string that you get from another string. So uh, Let's do a simpler thing here instead of this whole complicated thing. So I'm going to drive, let me remove all of this here up to this kind of point there. So we grab a string here and we're just going to create a position from within here. So here the position is going to be, let's say three. Okay. So we're just trying to create a substring. So here, I'm going to print this and say your sub string is and then here we're going to concatenate the string and then dot substring, right? And then we put whatever position is here. In, in this case, position is three. So we're going to put that there. So your sub string is now what this would do is whatever string I type it's going to remove the first uh, three characters and then show me the rest. That's what it does. That's how you can do, that's how you create a substring. So let's see that in action. So I can do Java, test.java, like that, all right? Okay, so I forgot an equal sign there. Sorry about that. All right, let's try again. So please type something. Again, I will type hello, and your substring is low because it eliminates the first three letters there. It's as simple as that. Now, what if you want uh, to eliminate, to start from a specific position and end at a specific position? So to get something in the center. So we can do pause start, and position end over here, right? So we start at position three. Now we can start at any position and end at position maybe eight, something like that. So you can just put pause start here and then pause end over there. So you get a substring of that string. You just tell it start here and there. That's all you do. So this is as good as putting the numbers directly here, like three and eight, like so. It's just that we are using variables here for better 
coding uh, for cleaner code yes so let's do again java test dot java please type something so we're gonna say hello there let me put an underscore so we can see where the spaces are so your substring is this you see that's the part it got this part right there that starts at three and ends at eight so that's how substring works you can get a substring of a string so that covers these two now contains just tells you whether a string contains another string that's how you check if there's a string within a string so this one here um we can just have something like hello exists something like that so we're going to be checking for the text hello in our string right hello does not exist so i'm going to put an if statement here simple and straightforward i'm just going to say if now because this contains is a boolean it returns a boolean it returns true or false just like matches it returns true or false whether there's a match or not uh, so that's how you know that it does contain that uh, item in there because it returns true or false so here i'm going to say string dot contains so the difference with contains and matches is that this matches will try to match the entire string right like for example if i say i want to match the word hello it means uh it has to here you can use regular expression actually that's the main difference i don't know if you can use this regular expression here we will try that okay uh so contains and match that one has to be a complete match this one has to just contain part of the text so let's see here does hello exist in the text so if string dot contains hello like that then we say hello exists otherwise we do an else statement what has just happened here okay i think sublime text is getting confused here let me move that okay as simple as that an if statement to tell us what's going on so back here let's redo the compilation so say hello there it say hello exists let's try again let me just type some random stuff and then put hello at the end or actually that's not hello so it would tell me hello does not exist let's try again uh, this time i'll type some random stuff put actual hello in the middle and type actually let me not even let me, let me type though let me just see yeah it shows it exists that's great but what about if i type like this and then put it without spaces like that just in the middle of the random text it still exists because it finds it so that's how exists uh, works so maybe it can actually be a regular expression as well let's see if we do uh, 0 to 9 like this if there is a character 0 to 9 any number of times let's see uh, instead of hello we're gonna say numbers exist So I just want to see if contains will will match that because I'm actually not sure. Let's go Java. So this is the thing with um, programming. If you want to be really good at a language, just test the limits of what you can do. Don't be scared to try new things because that's how you learn actually what works and what doesn't work so here i'm trying to see if it will tell me if there are any numbers here it says numbers do not so you see it actually works as a regular expression it passes regular expressions as well let me put numbers like that and mix them with letters and more numbers and say numbers do not exist 
So I guess it doesn't work, right? Let's try this again. Um, let me put just numbers, right? Yeah, so it doesn't work. So that's the difference, I guess, with contains and matches. Uh, this one just looks for a specific string. Match, matches um, can use a regular expression, which makes it uh, quite powerful. So that's the difference, I guess, between the two. Now, there are times when you want to know, because this just tells you whether the string is there. For example, if hello is part of the string, right? But what about if you want to know exactly where that string is? in the other string. That's when you use index of here. So this one has two versions, of course. So here you just say, I want to find this string. You put the string in there. Let's say hello. If it's there, it will bring the position at which hello starts. That's what it returns, not a Boolean, but the position number. And then here, uh, you can tell it I want to find hello, but don't start at zero because here to start at zero, uh, position zero of the string. But here you can tell it exactly where to start. Maybe you want it to start at position 10. Will it still find hello there? And that's how you can do a kind of a search in there. So we're going to use this. There's also this one equals. Okay, so you may be tempted to say if string something like this, if string equals uh, something, some other string like hello, like this, because this is a perfectly good comparison where you say, maybe let's say you put, you type the word hello in the string here, and then you want to say, okay, if the string is equal to hello, then hello exists, right? Uh, or not exist here. Uh, never mind the English here. But this will not work. So instead, you're going to do string dot equals like this. That's how you do it when you are comparing. Uh, when you're doing a comparison for text, right? Now, this has to be exactly the same. It has to be hello without any other text. So you use equals. So this is kind of like matches, but instead of using regular expression, it just says equals. Now, if you don't want it to be case sensitive, you use equals ignore case instead. And then if you want to check if a string is empty, you just ask the question string dot is empty. That will return true or false as well. So that's how these all work here. So for the equals, equals ignore case, you use that and is empty and so on. And then there's also this to lower to upper. So let's do a quick test of these and then we can go to lower and upper. Then we can go to the uh, index of real quickly here. So here we're just trying to see if hello uh, exists or not. So let's see here. I'm going to do Java test dot Java. So I'm going to type hello like that and it will tell me hello exists because it's checking if the string is equal to hello. Now, if I type hello like this and still put spaces like that, it will still say the same thing because it removes the spaces. Remember that. And also, if I type something like hello, but put some other character, then it falls apart because it does not equal that one. Also, it falls apart if I use capitalized hello like that, it will say it does not exist which is why the other comparison, which ignores the case, is, is available if you need it. So we use the ignore case in this case. And then if I run that and do hello, I will capitalize the O as well like that. It still finds it because it's not case sensitive anymore. So that's how those two work. Same with is empty, just tells you if it is empty. So string is empty like that. You don't need to provide anything because we're just asking uh, if it's empty or not. So here, empty as opposed to not empty, just like that, right? Okay, so if I go back and try to run this, um, 
type something. So if I don't type anything, it will show me empty. If I do type something, not empty. Simple as that. So that's how those work. Now to lower and to upper, just converts a string to lowercase or to uppercase, as simple as that. So we're gonna say PR and we're gonna say string dot to let's try it with let's try with to upper case like that. So it will just show you the uppercase version of your text. So let me come back here. So I'm gonna go Java test dot Java. Please type something. Uh, this is a sentence. And then we get the uppercase version of the sentence. Simple and straightforward. Same as to lowercase. There are certain times you want, you ask the user uh, to, to type something and you want it in lowercase or in uppercase, you can use that to convert. Okay, so that deals with all of this. Now let's deal with index of. So we can go to replace here and finally split. So index of, like I said, it just searches the string, right? So it gives you the position. So here I can just say string dot index of, and then say maybe the word we are looking for the word, hey, like that, right? So it will give me the position of hey in this case. So if I run this, please type something. Okay, what's wrong with that? Uh, ah, right. Okay, so as you can see, this one expects a, a string, right? But this index of returns a number, okay? So we can overload this method here very quickly by just doing this and getting an integer version just like that, right? So it's exactly the same method like this, but this one expects an integer, this one expects a string, and it works just fine. This is how we overload methods in Java, because uh, the problem is that we have to specify the type of data here. Always, whenever we're instantiating some data, we have to specify the type. Now, sometimes you may never know, just like this print function we've created, we may never know what we are trying to print. Sometimes it's an integer, sometimes it's a double, sometimes it's a string, not always a string. Or another method is you could convert this to a string, right? You can say dot to string if there's a method like that. But here, it's just better to overload the methods. Put exactly the same method here, only because it expects something else, it makes it a different method altogether. So let's see if that problem will not arise again. Okay, so let me type something. Here I'm gonna type hey, and it shows me the position is at zero. Let me clear the screen for a second here. Okay, so type something. Now let me do this and then put hey somewhere in the middle there. It will still tell me it's at position 10, okay? Now let's imagine uh, we don't have uh, hey in the sentence. So I'm just going to put some random stuff. Look at what we get. We get minus one. So we get minus one when we don't find what we're looking for and we get the position of that item when we do find it. So that's how you can use the index of function in this case. And like I said, if you want, you can do comma and then tell it where to start from. Maybe to start at position eight, it will ignore the first uh, characters up to position eight and then start searching from there. So you can do that if you want. So in this case, if you want to know that a value exists, you can say string dot index of, if you put this inside an if statement, right? You can do something like if string dot index of is greater or equal to zero. So when you say it's greater or equal to zero, then it's being found because as you have seen, when it doesn't find it, the answer is a negative one. So that is not equal or greater than zero. That means it didn't find it. That's how we do it in here. So we're gonna put an else statement 
and then print something and say not found and on this one we're gonna just print found and just say pr found like so alrighty then so that's how we search for specific text here we are searching for hey so if i do that please type something i'll type hey it will say found now if i do this and then type something put hey in the middle there it will say found if i repeat this and then this time i do not put any hey not found so that's how that can work so back here uh, the replace method just replaces a string with a different one so here for example i can do string dot replace and then the old uh you just put the old item and the new one so for example i can replace the word user with uh a name right and i'm gonna put string there right So I'm going to create another variable called sentence. Uh, let me call it greeting. So greeting dot replace user with a uh, string, whatever string the user. So we're going to say, please type your name here. And then the name will be inside string, right? And then we're going to create uh, a string here string code greeting is equal to this one will be hello comma user like that so all we are doing now is replacing the the word user with whatever the user has provided and printing it out now this greeting dot replace is going to return that version but let's print it out once it's returned so we're going to do pr like this and print it out so again java test dot java please type your name yes let's say my name is john doe and then it tells me hello john doe okay let's do another replacement uh, maybe my name is mary hello mary as simple as that okay so hopefully that is clear and then now the final one which is the uh, the split method here so the split method will split a string into an array uh, I know we haven't talked about arrays yet but we will uh, it splits a string into separate items of an array so the first version of this function will just grab a string and then split wherever that's uh, it can split but the second version tells it to limit the split to a specific number if you want that so let's see how that actually works so for example let's say if i had a string uh, of names right uh, something like john and then separated by a comma or even space like this so if i use this split function here and tell it to split on the empty there it's going to create an array uh, with these now an array is just a, um, a a collection of how do i explain this so a variable is like where you let's imagine a an array of strings right or an array of numbers so the way we instantiate integers like this now if i put that it automat automatically becomes an array instead so i can say int num is equal to zero but if i want to be able to store many numbers i can do this instead okay and so that is kind of an that is an array but i have to put the brackets there to show that it's an array so now it becomes just like the way a string is where you can grab an item based on the position it's the same thing here if i want number three this is position zero one two because it always starts at zero 
uh, even if this number is 8, it's at position 0. So if I grab this, if I want this item, it's at position 0. I'll grab it from there. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So in the same way, we can split this single string into an array based on a specific character that we use to split. So let's see this in action. So what I want to do is, now since we're going to be using arrays here, uh, we need to import the utility for arrays. So inside the util right there, there's a class called arrays. So we'll put it there. And now I want to create an array of strings. So it will be like that. And then let me give it a name. This one will be names. Why do I have that there? Names is equal to, and then whatever string the user gave us, we split it. Now, what character do we use to split is the comma. Okay, so we're going to have names there. And then what I want to do is loop through the names. So I'm going to use a for loop. So this one will be int i is equal to zero, as always. Then i less than um, names dot length. Now, names in this case is an array. And an array object, just like string has methods, the array object also has methods and properties. Now, this one is not a method, the length, it's a property. So it's just like something that holds a value. It's not a function, it's just a variable. So that variable always contains the length of the array. How many items are inside that array? So names.length is like, we can replace that with a number, maybe like 10, if there are 10 items, for example. So it's the same as doing that. And then let's increment our i, as always, like so. So we've created a loop where we go through all the names that were created. And here we can now print each name. Uh, so it can say name. Now I want to know what name number this is. So I'm going to say name plus i, which is names, maybe the name zero and so on. And then we say is. Let's put a full colon there and then concatenate the names. So because uh, this is the array, we want to grab an item at a particular uh, index, which is held by i there. Because i represents the number we are at and that represents the index of the name. So let's recap a little bit what we are doing here. So we're going to grab a string that the user provides and then we're going to split it into individual strings that will be held in one array uh, called names. The split will happen through commas. Wherever there's a comma, that split will occur. And then we loop through the array and then display each name individually. So let's see how that works. So let's do Java, test.java. All right. So type, it shouldn't be type your name really here. It should be type a few names separated by a comma. So let me just type a few names. John, comma, I'll leave spaces here. Mary, comma, uh, Peter, something like this. And there we go. You see name zero is John, name one is Mary, name two. So it can separate them and run with them individually. Now, as you can see here, there are spaces on the names there. So we don't want that. Um, so let's change that. Yeah. And then here, what I want to do is because this, the result of this is a string, which means it can use string methods. So here I just need to do dot uh, trim, for example, to trim the leading and uh, trailing empty spaces. So if we redo this, and this time I'm going to type John, same thing, comma, leave a space, Mary, comma, leave a space, Peter, comma, leave a space, Do. And there we go. So you see now the spaces are no longer there because you can see they're on the same line here. Name zero is what? 
and so on. So that's how you use the split. Now you don't always split by comma. You can separate it by spaces, right? So in that case, the split should occur at a space. So I'm just going to put a space there. I think even though I don't put anything there, it should automatically guess that I'm trying to split by space. But who knows? Let me just put that there. Let's try it. Let's try it without anything in there and see if we get an error, right? We have to be able, don't be afraid to test things. And we do get an error, right? Found for split. No arguments is the error. So it does need some kind of arguments. So let's just put a space there. And let's try this again. Okay, so, so far it seems to have worked. Please type some names separated by space. So let's do John, Doe, Mary, Peter, and there we go. So it gets them based on this space there. So you can use any character to separate the two. You can say separated by full colon, right? Something like this. And then here we put that full colon there. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you want this to work. So I'm going to say John, uh, Peter, Mary, and then it will separate them. Now let's put the limit, right? Right on split, we can say limit to two. So then it will limit to two items only, regardless what how many items you add. Let's try this again. So separated by full colon, right? So John, Mary, Peter, Do. So look what happens now. Because we are limiting it to two items in the array, it gets John, but the rest are put in the last one. So that's how the limit works. All right. So all those are string methods that you can use. So you can also Google uh, other methods in here. I, I think I've left a few, but they are not so widely used. You can check those out on Google if you want more detail. But otherwise, these are the ones you're going to use the most when doing your coding. All right, so hopefully you've learned something new, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.